These are the reed switches that I'm going to use, and they are from Katai. They originally came when I bought this bike computer for my old mountain bike many years ago, and the quality of these is really good, and they are actually, to some extent, serviceable. They all come apart, so they, they are reliable, and obviously designed for exactly the purpose of measuring speed and cadence on a bike. So what I did with the last automatic shifting bike project was that I treated my old mountain bike to some new reed switches and I used the old ones because these holders here tend to suffer a bit from corrosion. They don't live up to the, the salt spray that we get in the air here. So it seemed a shame to cut the holder off brand new ones, so these ones, I'll clean them up a bit and use them on the new bike project. Well, how long do these reed switches last for? I had the first minor issue with one of these and it was basically a little bit of water got inside it and it was causing it to false trigger. Very simple to fix, I just took it apart, dried it out, cleaned it up a bit and put it back together again, putting a little bit of sealant around it and it's worked fine since. And that reed switch had done 12,000 miles, about three years, on the auto shifting bike, and it had done at least five years, if not considerably more, with this bike computer on my old mountain bike. So these really are definitely worth the money. They are very good ones. I've been going through my reed switch collection, and these are obviously gonna be the cadence and speed, but I need another one, a third, for the derailleur position and it needs to be a reasonable quality as in it needs to be waterproof but it doesn't need to survive a lot of switching cycles though um, this one is obviously not going to be very waterproof and I'm not really keen on the idea of these ones either but this one which is also a cat eye is really quite a nice one it's been potted inside so it should be waterproof, and this bracket here might be very useful for attaching it to the derailleur, and it can be attached either way. The bracket didn't turn out to be the right shape, but I can make my own. So I'm going to make it out of aluminium, obviously, so it doesn't affect the magnetic field. And it's going to attach to the derailleur using its adjustment screw right there. On the other bike, I just cable tied the reed switch onto the seat tube and it can sometimes lose its adjustment, especially if it gets knocked. The adjustment of the derailleur reed switch is critical because you obviously want it to switch when the derailleur is moving between chain rings. Otherwise, it's just going to be either on all the time or off all the time, which is pretty useless. Bracket is now finished and I'm really happy with that one. It's so nice not to have cable ties running around the frame. There's the magnet, which will operate it, and it's just glued on. The other one I managed to drill a hole through the derailleur, but this one seems to be hardened. I'm running the wire down the frame here, with held on with electrical tape for the moment. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that on a more permanent basis. Running down to the box, and in there is a piece of wire insulation as a like a grommet and also help to waterproof it and there's the wire running into the box ready to be soldered for the cadence reed switch i've drilled a hole in the crank i was going to drill it there because there's um text stamped into there but i realized actually most of the strength in a crank is around the outer surfaces so I'll definitely drill it in the middle best place it's 5mm for this 5mm diameter neodymium magnet. It's actually totally unsuitable really for this application. Neodymium is uh, very susceptible to corrosion, so not ideal for outdoors and also it's much too strong really for reed switches. You don't need this strength for them. Um, so I'm going to glue it in and cover it up with two part glue to weatherproof it. Epoxy it in place there. I've left it sticking out a little bit. Some of the older style parameter pedals have a piece on the back here. So it's nice to have that little extra sticking out. Because the uh, reed switches are both identical, I'm going to install them side by side on the frame here. And I'm going to line up the wheel magnet 
with the cadence magnet there and that will make it a bit neater and save on so many cable ties. The cadence and speed read switch is installed side by side like that. I'm quite happy with that. One of them has a longer wire unfortunately so that's why this is all coiled up in here. It's not quite as neat as I'd like. And I've done the same thing with the electrical tape and got it as far as the box. The read switch is soldered. They're a little bit fiddly, those wires are tiny and they've also got plastic strands inside the copper. So it's quite difficult to get the solder to stick at first. Now that's the back. The strain relief is quite important, obviously. You don't want them uh, to pull out because the wires are quite delicate, those little wires. So our next is to test it. All of the switches on this bike have little LEDs across them. These I've salvaged from a smashed light that I found on a forest road. They run at incredibly low power. They've got 3.3k resistors across them. The idea is one I got from a job that I had on a cliff railway. And all of the switches on that had indicator lights on them. And uh, it's really nice to think of the person who's going to be troubleshooting something in the future. Because in this case, certainly, it's probably most likely to be myself. And in the vast majority of cases, it's not the microcontroller that's the problem, it's the inputs. Because a microcontroller will only do exactly as you ask it, so the output is only as good as the inputs you're putting into it. So if you watch the lights and I move the wheel, move the magnets away from the switches, they go off. So there's the top one there is for the derailleur. These two above it here are for the handlebar switches, and this one will be for the wheel, and the other one is for the crank. Now when I turn the cranks and spin up the wheel, I get little blinky lights. And really excitingly, what that actually means is that now there is nothing stopping this bike from shifting by itself, apart from uploading the right code to an Arduino. And then it will hopefully have some intelligence then, and be able to take over the shifting from me. Which is really exciting, on <laughs> a new bike. So that will be coming up next. Thank you for watching.